Well, hello, everybody. It's, uh, it's been a long, long time with this stay at home and this pandemic, these criteria that we have to follow all the time. But uh, it's one of those things I just wanted to greet you once again, because I really miss seeing so many of you on those first Friday meetings on the Thursday, the day before first Friday. But it's one of those things where, you know, I've been I've been alone here. You know, I, I live by myself and uh, I, I lived for so many years in a monastery. You know, I was a Benedictine monk for 45, 50 years. And then when I became bishop, I moved out of the monastery. And now I live in my residence here on uh, St. Thomas Aquinas on Ansel Road. And uh, I'll tell you, now I know what uh, St. Anthony felt like when he lived in the, in, the, in the desert, because that's what it's like here is a desert, because I have my surroundings and I have the surroundings and I see them day in and day out, just myself. <laughs> Thank God I'm good company. But anyway, I have better company in my chapel because down in my chapel, I have the Blessed Sacrament reserved and I'm able to offer mass every morning. And it's one of those things that so many people and all of you probably who are watching, uh, maybe get to witness the mass on, uh, on, on TV or listen to it on the, on the rock on, on the radio, 1260, the rock or, or EWTN. But, you know, it's so much different when you're able to do it yourself. And, and I think the real treasure I have is that each time I offer mass, I'm able to receive the Eucharist. And that is, and that is so important because the Eucharist is the center of our life. Jesus told us, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And, uh, sometimes I really think that, uh, one of the things the pandemic is really accentuating and bringing to the forefront is how important the Eucharist is to each one of us. We miss it. Spiritual communion is, is, a, is a replacement, but it's a very, very, very minimal replacement for the real thing because the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist is so important. I'm able to visit Jesus because he's in present in my tabernacle, in my chapel, and uh, I'm able to visit him periodically as I, as I move through the day. I'm able to say my divine office. and my divine office, four times a day, I, I, I sit down in the chapel and uh, pray my office and then have some time for meditation and reflection. And it's the same way with my Mass. And so for all of you who are, haven't been able to uh, attend Mass uh, one more week, you know, and uh, on the 25th uh, Memorial Day, the churches will once again be open for daily Mass. And there's going to be a lot of restrictions and a lot of, a lot of things that we're going to have to be careful of because of the uh, potential spread of the chiro uh, coronavirus. I am grateful to Almighty God that in the past six weeks, the numbers of, of, of uh, serious incidences and, and deaths it has not exceeded what the, you know, the people predicted that was going to happen. And I think that God is good all the time and God is with us and God walks with us and God is at, at our side at all times. This is the time when we really need faith. In our first Friday club, the whole purpose of the first Friday club was to accentuate the importance of the Eucharist and, and make us a Eucharistic people. To do those, to do those nine, nine first Fridays, so that you know we can really truly live up, live up to the to the indulgences that come with those those nine first Fridays. However, you know it's been broken now because we haven't been able to receive communion. We've only had the spiritual communions, and hopefully, hopefully, beginning beginning in in June, first Fridays will be able once again to be part of our lives. I have no idea when the first Friday club will again be able to meet because of the restrictions of the, you know, of the uh, city club, you know, whether or not we'll be able to gather as a number, but in any case, know that you are in my prayers. I love seeing each one of you each and every time we met. I always look forward to the opportunity of thanking the speaker that we had and, and do some, doing some reflection on, on, on what his, the content of his talk was, but also to say goodbye, to say goodbye and send you on your way, send you on your way after, after usually a very encouraging, uh, encouraging and inspirational talk from the speakers that we have on, 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 on the line. And so today, 
I've been asked to just say a few words to you, give you some words of encouragement. You know, the pandemic will end. The pandemic will end. And we will get back to living. It may not be the same normal life that we've had in the past. It may not be that same normal life, but now we have the opportunity to make the life something worth living. Let the Christ, the Christ, especially Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, be a central part of our life as we move forward. We know how we've missed it these last six weeks, but now we know that it's, we will have the opportunity once again to share life with Jesus. As we celebrate his ascension into heaven, as we celebrate his ascension into heaven and prepare for Pentecost, we know what the apostles went through. When Jesus left them and ascended into heaven, they just stood there looking up at the skies and we know from scripture, the angel said, why are you just standing here? Why are you just standing here? Get out there. Get out there and spread the good news that Jesus Christ is alive, is risen from the dead. And Jesus rewards our faith by sending us the Holy Spirit as he promised. Because he said, unless I go back to the Father, I cannot send you the Spirit. And so as the apostles received the Spirit on Pentecost, so we too, through our baptism and through our confirmation also have received the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that lives within us. And as I mentioned to you once before, that is, that is God's GPS. God's positioning system is the Holy Spirit guiding us on our way to our destination. What's our destination? Our destination is union with God, touching the face of God. Someday, someday, we know not when, but someday we know and we believe and we trust in Jesus. We trust in Jesus Christ. He's all merciful and he will bring us home to spend eternity with him. And we will see him face to face because as we read in the scriptures, we will be like him. We will be a spirit as well. And a spirit can see the spirit and we will understand Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because we will be living in their presence and we will be sharing eternal life with them and eternal happiness, an eternal joy, something we can't even dream about now, but something that we will treasure because it's a promise kept. And Jesus has made that promise and Jesus will keep it. And so as I share these words with you and share some of my thoughts, I ask you to continue on your journey. Be faithful. Be faithful. Share the Eucharist once we are able to get back into the church. Share the Eucharist. Treasure that moment when the Jesus comes to you in, this, in, in the scriptures, in the mass, and also comes to you in the Holy Eucharist. Eat his body. And share his blood. And let him be part of your life. And then take him out into the world. And let the world know that Jesus has triumphed. Jesus has triumphed. He has survived the pandemic with us. And now he takes us forward. As the apostles went forward after Pentecost, we too must go forward and proclaim the good news. So God bless you all. And I, in closing this, as I close all the times with the, at the meetings of the First Friday Club, we say God is good all the time. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks for, thanks for being with us today.